relationships. As you saw in the previous lesson, Inventor lets you input values to create dimensions as you sketch, but this isn't the only way to add them. To show you what I mean, I'll dimension the circle and polygon sketch here using the dimension tool. At the moment, notice that the shapes are free to move around and change size, meaning they are unconstrained. In order to fully constrain the sketch so that it can't move anymore, I'll need to add four dimensions to the sketch, as you can see on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. The four dimensions referenced here means that there are four degrees of freedom in this sketch that will need to be locked down before it will be fully defined. To start, I'll first control the sketch's size, so I'll go up to the Constrain panel in the Sketch tab and activate the Dimension tool. Since the polygon and circle are connected, I can define both of their sizes simultaneously by clicking on the circle's edge, typing a value, say 60, and then clicking the green check to place the dimension. Like the Line tool, the Dimension tool remains active, and I can continue adding dimensions if I want to. With the shape size now defined, the status bar now reports that three dimensions are needed in order to fully constrain this sketch. Remember how a moment ago, I was able to change the sketch's size and location by dragging around the sketch? If I try and drag the sketch now, notice that only the location changes. This is because the diameter dimension is now driving the geometry, meaning that it is a parameter for the model. This relationship between dimensions and geometry is the basis of parametric modeling and means that if I want to change the sketch's size in any way, I'd need to edit this parameter. Since I can still move the sketch in the X, Y, and Z directions, I'll next need to dimension its location to fully constrain it. Since there's no other geometry in the file, I'll need to dimension its location relative to the origin. I'll restart the dimension tool by pressing Enter. And this time, instead of selecting an object to set its size, I can select a point, like this endpoint, and another object, like the origin, and I'm able to set a distance between them. As I move the cursor on the screen, notice that Inventor switches the type of dimension I can place between vertical, horizontal, or aligned, depending on where my mouse is relative to the points. In order to lock in the aligned dimension, I'll need to left-click while this icon is showing, or I can lock to any dimension by right-clicking and selecting an option from here. I'll select Aligned to dimension the diagonal distance between the points and set it to 80. The status bar updates to show that I need to add two more dimensions. I'll press Escape to exit the tool, and notice that I can still move the sketch in the X and Y directions. I'll restart the dimension tool and create two more dimensions using the origin and a point to the side of it, then the origin and a point above it. With that done, the status bar reads as fully constrained, and I can no longer move the sketch geometry. It's generally considered good practice to ensure that every sketch you create is fully constrained before moving on to create features. And using dimensions is the most straightforward and rigid way to do this. In the next lesson, however, I'll show you another way to define sketch geometry by using constraints to control geometric relationships.